food waste. It's something inevitable that everyone everywhere encounters as we all eat. From transportation and processing to retail and consumers, approximately 40% of food is wasted in the U.S. This loss corresponds to approximately 133 billion pounds and 161 billion dollars worth of food. But money isn't the only issue. Food waste also has serious repercussions for our climate. The food we don't eat is the single largest category of waste in municipal landfills in the U.S. Not surprisingly then, landfills are the third largest source of methane emissions in the country. But why does food waste produce methane in landfills? Well, it's not being managed with high carbon materials, air, or water. It's buried and driven over. That food waste is then decomposing anaerobically or without oxygen, which produces a stench, methane, an extremely noxious planet warming gas. Food waste management expert Juliana Ciano explains how much greenhouse gas food waste produces. On a global scale, if food waste in landfills was a country of its own, it would be the third largest greenhouse gas producer next to the U.S. and China. But what's the big issue with methane? Imagine this, a state stricken with drought, more formation of ground level ozone, a hazardous air pollutant, and terrible weather conditions for farmers production. These climate impacts are already occurring in New Mexico, the sixth fastest warming state in the nation. Greenhouse gases capture heat radiated from the sun and Earth's atmosphere, heating the Earth and advancing global warming. As food waste produces more of these greenhouse gases, it only makes these impacts worse. But what if there was a mitigation and adaptation mechanism that addresses these impacts by diverting methane emissions from happening in the first place, sequestering carbon for years, creating a positive feedback loop, and collaborating with a natural process, making it extremely accessible? Not to mention it gives back to the earth by making up for lost food production because of climate change. This solution exists, compost. When we capture food waste and make compost, A, we're not producing that methane, source reduction, and B, we're ending up with a nutrient-rich soil amendment that helps our soil sequester carbon and methane from the atmosphere back into the soil in the form of carbohydrates, where it can be helpful. Reunity Resources says that for every 100 pounds of food waste aerobically composted, the equivalent of 54 pounds of carbon dioxide and 8 pounds of methane is kept out of the atmosphere. Not to mention that compost can also reduce or eliminate the need for chemical fertilizers, promotes higher yields of crops, and can be used to remediate and enhance water retention in soils. To put these wonderful benefits of composting in action, I'm initiating and coordinating a commercial collection composting program at my high school, New Mexico School for the Arts, to help foster a closed loop food system, as any place that feeds a lot of people will naturally produce a lot of food waste. This is something totally novel for our community. But will this make a difference? Juliana says that across Santa Fe Public Schools, they reduced their trash pickup by one third through composting. On top of this, while composting at home may not be an ability for every household, they can engage through an affiliated school or business. This is why I'm proposing that we should prioritize composting, including education about its benefits and access in any manner, from food waste drop off to school composting in our New Mexico community. In 2018, Americans recovered almost 25 million tons of municipal solid waste through composting. This means lost food is given back to the earth to save the money, health, nutrition, and climate our society needs to thrive.